Recently, I made a video featuring some of the most insane skateboarding tricks ever done, such as the Water Tower Ollie, Danny Wei jumping the Great Wall of China, and the Leon 25 Gap. But trust me, that was just the tip of the iceberg. Because skateboarders are known for constantly pushing the limits of what's possible, the amount of insane skateboarding tricks ever done is pretty much endless. And obviously, I couldn't cover all of the greatest skateboarding tricks done in just one video. So today, I'm bringing you even more of the most insane tricks that have ever been done, and trust me, even if you're not a huge skateboarding fan, or have been skating for over 20 years, I guarantee that each of these tricks will blow your mind. And make sure to watch till the end, because the best is always saved for last. So without taking up any more time, let's just get right into the video. Up first is Danny Wei's helicopter drop-in. Danny Wei is an amazingly crazy skateboarder that has landed tricks that many people thought would be impossible, such as jumping the Great Wall of China as just one example. But to this day, his helicopter drop-in has to be one of the most risky skateboarding tricks ever done. Rob Dyrdek put it best when he said this. It went from this incredible day that I'm about to watch the most insane disaster. If it goes too early, you land on, you're jumping 15 feet to coping. If you jump just a little bit off, you're jumping 30 feet to the flat ground. I was so off in the corner, just like on each one, just like, Wah. We have seen what can happen if you hit a coping from that high up. And we have also seen what happens when you miss a landing and fall flat on the ground. Danny Wei was quite literally threading the needle with this jump. To say this is risky is an understatement. Is he kidding? Like, guys, is he joking? He's not joking. Like, they would let you do that. They're gonna let you get in the helicopter and jump. You're really, they're gonna let you do that. I was like, and he's like, yeah, we're gonna do it right now. But after a few tries, Danny Wei did what he does best and beat the odds and landed what I consider to this day to be one of the most epic drop-ins ever. While I'm on the topic of helicopters and skateboarding, I have to give an honorable mention to Bob Burnquist, who I'll be talking about more later in this video, who also has his own fair share of helicopter stunts, some of which can be debatably more impressive than Danny Way's drop-in, although of course, Danny Way did it first. Bob Burnquist started out with a drop-in, which he honestly made look easy, but that might have also been because it was done on a mega ramp compared to the half pipe that Danny Wei used, making the landing way bigger and technically easier. Although that does not discredit Bob in the slightest because he did a lot more than just drop in. He also jumped onto the skid of the helicopter before dropping back in, which I think is even more crazy than just a drop in because, I mean, just look at this. There's, there's so many factors. There's so many things that could go wrong. After that, he used his mega ramp to literally jump onto the helicopter, get lifted up a few thousand feet in the air, and then skydive back down onto his mega ramp. If you're not at least a little bit impressed by that, then I don't know what's wrong with you. And we're just getting started. And the next trick that I am covering is the world's steepest hill bomb. Skateboarding and hill bombs go together like Democrats and homelessness, or Republicans and being in the closet. won't come out of the closet. Mr. Cruz, come out of the closet. No. Come on, Mr. Cruz, this is ridiculous. I'm never coming out. You can't have one without the other. I'm sure one of the first things that many people did when they first stepped foot on a skateboard was bomb a hill. And for all of those fortunate or unfortunate enough to have this experience, you can probably confirm that even if you thought you were ready, you just were not ready in the slightest. Then there is Don Nguyen, also known as the Nuge, who decided to hill bomb the most terrifying hill in the world. Baker Street in Los Angeles is the fifth steepest hill in America with a 32% grade, which might not sound like a lot, but trust me, it's a lot. I mean, look at this. There's a famous photo of a bus doing a disaster on the top over the spine, you know, like, it's just like... My general rule of thumb is that if the hill looks steep on camera, it has to be an absolute monster in person. And this is not just any steep hill that is nicely paved and looks very nice and is just, you know, very smooth like a mega ramp pretty much. That's kind of what it is. 
No, this hill is absolutely battered with tons of potholes and cracks all throughout the hill. There's probably roads in Iraq that are smoother than this. And the Nuge had to avoid all these obstacles to make it down the hill without, I mean, just spreading himself thin on the concrete like some peanut butter and jelly. And yet somehow, he still made it look easy. I mean, I guess we shouldn't expect anything less from the guy who was the first person to ever ollie the iconic El Toro stair set. Up next, we have Tony Hawk's Loop of Death. Tony Hawk is perhaps the most well-known skateboarder in the world. I feel like most people know of skateboarding only because of Tony Hawk. Such a legendary status isn't given out for no reason, and Tony Hawk has done some of the most impressive tricks ever done in his time. Most iconic of all is 900, which is arguably what kickstarted skateboarding into the mainstream in the early 2000s. Although without a doubt the 900 is a very impressive trick, Tony Hawk's Loop of Death is my favorite trick that he has ever done. To make a long story short, the loop of death is a full loop that you can ride through. Tony Hawk thought up the concept to be an exciting feature to be used in his tour that he was doing with the Birdhouse team. The ramp was built and after some practice with foam mats and a few body slams here and there, eventually the whole Birdhouse crew could do the loop successfully and its intimidating nature was quickly tamed. So naturally, Tony wasn't satisfied, and a few years later, he would build the downward spiral loop. Imagine you got shrunk down and flushed into a toilet bowl on your skateboard. Well then you would pretty much be skateboarding the downward spiral loop. To this day, I'm so confused about the physics that go into this trick. Like you need some serious forces to stay on the wall, and then somehow still be able to ride away at the bottom. And of course, this is absolutely crazy, it pretty much breaks the laws of physics. But there is one other loop that even Tony Hawk won't touch with a 10 foot pole. And that would be nothing other than Bob Burnquest's corkscrew, which is pretty much a sideways loop with the top removed. So pretty much you're jumping off a wall ride, doing a flip, and then landing onto another wall ride. The corkscrew is undeniably cool, but it's its own thing. In addition to this, Bob Burnquest also has his own loop of death. But his has a top that can be removed, so you're just... I don't even know how to explain it, just look at this craziness. And this is actually the exact same loop that almost killed Tony Hawk that one time. I can't even show you the footage for one second because YouTube deems it unsafe for some reason. But you have to trust me that the fall that Tony had was really bad. According to him, it was his worst to date because it almost killed him, obviously, leaving him with multiple fractures, including his arm, his back, and even his skull. Up next is the most intimidating skateboarding spot possibly ever, with the most intimidating name to match. The Municipal Death Rail. In skateboarding, a name for a spot isn't given without a good reason, and the municipal death rail looks just as intimidating as it sounds. With a 30 foot drop greeting you as you look over the edge, most skaters won't even take the spot into consideration. When you're standing at the top of that thing and it's 30 feet down, you're like, there's no way somebody's grinding this thing. For 15 years I walked past that rail and was just like, you know, if you stick, you're done. Dane Berman was the only skater crazy enough to think he could do it. So he stepped up and quite literally went to war. To his surprise, grinding the rail was actually quite easy, but the landing turned out to be a lot bigger than he expected. It's crazier than any of the big stunts I've ever seen. It's like a second story Jaws drop from the end of the rail and that's why he just kept getting pounded. As he continued his battle with the spot, a crowd started to form around him, cheering him on as he continued to smash himself on the concrete below. I definitely got to a point where I thought, like, I don't think I can roll away, but, like, there's no point in stopping while I'm, like, I still feel okay to keep going. But he refused to give up and continued to keep trying, getting closer and closer to rolling away with each attempt. We're not coming back tomorrow. Like, he's not even gonna be able to walk tomorrow. Like, it's either he does this right now or this isn't happening. Until finally, all bruised and battered, he stomped the landing as the crowd cheered and he made skateboarding history forever and landed one of the most insane tricks and most insane thrasher covers that was ever featured. As promised, the best would be saved for last, but before I cover that, 
let me have a few honorable mentions that I could have had here but aren't because I recently include them in the video or just because of other reasons. Jumping the Great Wall of China, the Leap of Faith, the Water Tower Ollie Gap, the Kinker, the Water Tower Board Slide, and any typical warm up for Jaws. So without further ado, in my opinion, the craziest skateboarding trick ever done was Bob Burnquist's Grand Canyon skateboarding base jump. Now before some of you go crazy in the comments about how this isn't a real skateboarding trick because Bob technically didn't land it because he didn't land on his board and it's just a glorified base jump, let me tell you why you're wrong and why this trick is perhaps the greatest ever done in skateboarding. First of all, he built this massive ramp and rail in the Grand Canyon as if he was Evil Knievel himself and the only way that he could safely base jump is to get enough speed to ollie and then grind the rail before dropping off the edge into the Grand Canyon where he would open his parachute down below. If he comes up short or misses the rail, he'll be too close to the canyon wall to pull his chute. Everyone held their breath on his first attempt. As he left the ramp, he made a mistake, resulting in him missing the rail and hitting it with his arm, causing him to spin out of control in a free fall. But thanks to his quick thinking and exceptional skydiving skills, he got himself oriented away from the rocks of the cliff and was able to pull his parachute and land safely. Before his second attempt, they adjusted the rail to make it a little bit taller and longer, and he absolutely nailed it perfectly, grinding the rail and rolling off of it, kicking his board away as he free falls to the bottom of the canyon and opens his parachute into a perfect landing letting out one of the most caveman-like prehistoric screams that I have ever heard. <laughs> anyway, if you think I missed something, please let me know in the comments down below as I'd love to do another version of this video again. And anyway, if you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't like it, leave an angry comment. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace out.